In my first 100 days, I'm going to introduce legislation for comprehensive immigration reform with a path to citizenship. No, don't worry about it. We're going to build a wall. Don't worry about it. We need to bring hardworking people out of the shadows. We're going to build a wall, and Mexico is going to pay for the wall, and we're going to make great... We need to build an economy and a future that every American can be proud of and be a part of. We must stop the massive inflow of refugees, which Hillary Clinton is trying to dramatically increase. The ones that Trump has proposed, they would put prejudice into practice. We have to close those doors. Immigration is one of the most divisive issues in this presidential campaign. The candidates disagree on solutions, but they both have painted a picture of a fundamentally broken system. Over the last year, Deb and I have been traveling around the country. We found that in the towns that are actually absorbing these refugees and immigrants, people have a very different view. We are in downtown Erie, Pennsylvania. This is definitely one of the refugee settlement cities around the U.S. And particularly here in Erie, I think they recognize that the sort of demographic vitality of a place like Erie is dependent on their absorbing people from outside. It's yeah. certainly the biggest population influx, the refugees, right now. 10% of the school population are, are actual refugee children. We met a young family with four children who fled Syria after their house was destroyed by bombs from Assad. قاعدين بالبيت واشتغل الصواريخ فونا صاروا خينوا برمي نزلوا على على عمارة عنا على البناية والله بنطلع أي بلد غير طبعا سوريا بالأوضاع وكذا والأردن أنا ناحية ال إنه وقت لما حكوا معنا يعني قلنا لهم أوكي مباشر يعني when refugees arrive in Erie, they're given emotional and financial support during their first few months by their sponsor organization. After that, groups like the Multicultural Community Resource Center step in and offer continuing training and classes. The general consensus is the State Department likes cities this size to resettle because nobody falls through the cracks. We look at training programs. We've had a variety of training programs over the years. Probably the most successful one that we've had is probably the dealers training where we teach people to deal blackjack and we have about 50% of the dealers at the local casino. It's bad for the dealer. Okay, this is a tip. So <laughs> our people, they don't have any knowledge about like gaming. Like we didn't have casino back in our country. So it was like new opportunity. Like So still now I'm working as a dealer. Plus like I got promoted two years ago. Now I'm supervisor and I'm liking it <laughs> so far. This is not allowed though. Yeah. Players are uh, it is a good place, like it's a small place with a lot of opportunity. So accessible on everything, like if you have to go to hospital, it won't take that long. No traffics. So it's a good place. The city of Erie will evolve. Um, it's, it's very supportive of individuals. Coming here, we really have had very little negativity, you know, even though the political climate is, you know, close the doors, do all that sort of stuff. We have nothing of that here. Population growth and, and bringing new blood and entrepreneurship and all that adds to, the, to the, what, what the United States was founded on. But you figure over the last 30 years, probably 18 to 20,000 refugees have come to Erie. You know, where would Erie be without those individuals? We've also heard a lot of rancor about illegal immigration in this election and about the idea that immigrants are taking jobs and causing crime. But here in the San Joaquin Valley, the border has always been fluid, and the agricultural industry depends on migrant labor. I'm uh, from here. I'm the firstborn of um, farmworker family immigrants from the state of Guanajuato in Mexico. My dad came when he was 16 years old to work during World War II. 
and he came as what the program was called Bracero program. Many field crops still call for stoop labor. Los Braceros are a necessary supplement to our domestic crews. In Spanish, Braceros means a man who works with arms and hands. But in American lingo, they are called lifesavers. Immigration allowed my parents to come, and what history has taught us, it, it's changed. So at one time, when the Labor Department ran it, it was, we want workers to come into the U.S. And now you have Homeland Security, and it's become more of a law enforcement, more of Let's try to, you hear that rhetoric, we gotta close the borders off. Communities in Mexico and here in the US have always shared the border. The southern part of the San Joaquin Valley, 70 plus percent, 75 percent of yeah, the immigrants are from Mexico. Without a formal system like the old Bracera program, it's even harder for today's farm workers, especially undocumented farm workers, to get access to legal representation. So Noah helps immigrants resolve their issues with pay and working conditions. He took us to meet one of his clients. Okay, uh, mi nombre es Verónica Mota y soy de la ciudad de Oaxaca. Soy campesina. Por 16 años he trabajado en el campo. El trabajo en el campo es difícil. Nosotros nos sentimos discriminados por muchas personas. Eh, también hay mucho racismo hacia nosotros porque somos latinos piensan que nosotros venimos a, a robarles en un país verdad que no es así que nosotros venimos a, a lo que es a estar bien en el trabajo y a exigir nuestros derechos como seres humanos things are changing slowly for farm workers a law recently passed in california guaranteed farm workers overtime pay for long hours the bill was authored by a member of the California State Assembly, Lorena Gonzalez, the daughter of an immigrant farm worker herself. The same process of established immigrants helping new arrivals is happening all over the country. Take Dodge City, Kansas. A quarter of all beef sold in the U.S. is packed here, and the packing houses attract immigrant families from all over Latin America, like the De La Rosa family. Well, I uh, came here to the United States when I was 13 years old, and I was born and raised in Mexico. So I was a kid, essentially, and I didn't think what we were doing. Ernesto came here as an undocumented immigrant, but he was able to work for the city due to the DACA executive order that President Obama signed in 2012. So let me ask you something I think most people who've not been to Dodge City, not been to this part of Southwest Kansas would be surprised by. One is these communities are majority Latino now Correct. in Southwest Kansas. And number two, from everything we've heard from all sides of the, of the divide, it seems to be a harmonious existence. Dodge City is one of those examples where uh, we have jobs, meat packing plants, uh, we have feeders, also agriculture uh, jobs, and those are mainly occupied by uh, immigrants. Mm -hmm. And our relationship with uh, within the city in terms of the different groups here is very friendly. Uh, we are a welcoming city to, to those newcomers, uh, and we tried everything uh, possible to integrate them. Ernesto helps immigrants navigate local legislation and has helped a number of them start businesses here, including Alicia de la Torre. We are from Zacatecas and we started this business three years ago. By the way, we don't know nothing about tortillas at that time, nothing at all, not even how to turn the machines on. At first, my husband and I started this business and right now we have like five or six yeah. employees. It's not about money, it's about compromise, yes. about our customers, yeah. so they receive the best we can do. And we feel happy right now. When you listen to the news, you hear all this political discussion, go home, build a wall, we don't want you. What do you think about that? Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel sorry for these persons because, I mean, for, in the eyes of God, I don't think it's supposed to be a wall between, between humans. I mean, 
we're here because we want to help to this nation keep growing. Yeah. Together we can have a better world yeah. and stop uh, thinking about walls because <laughs> we don't need any more. As we've traveled around the country, Deb and I have seen again and again this disconnect between on the one side the harsh national political rhetoric about immigration and on the other the nuanced reality of lives and communities like these. Yes, national policy matters and yes, there are flaws, but the actual day-to-day -day experience of so many immigrants and the communities absorbing them suggests to us that individuals are finding ways to make the long American history of absorbing immigrants go on بدي يتعلموا الاولاد طبعا اول شيء وانا طالعتني اولادي يعني مشان يتعلموا يامنوا مستقبلهم والله حلمهم كبير حلمهم كبير 